Maple School District reading you another bedtime story and tonight I'm really excited to share with you a wonderful author Miss Leticia Ordaz who's a news anchor in Sacramento that is Latina and we're going to feature her story tonight because she's been coming to our Greenfield schools and we're so excited for that because she is Latina and does is just a great role model so thanks for joining me here tonight for me to read this story to you. Hola comunidad de Greenfield, soy Subred Garbal, aquí con ustedes leyendo más historias en las noches y este día, esta noche, voy a celebrar una amiga mía que se llama Leticia Ordaz. Ella es una televista, está en Sacramento, pero ella también escribió libros para que los niños y niñas latinos puedan ver que lo que pueden soñar puede um, a, a hacer. Y ella es una niña, ella fue una niña con sueños de ser en la televisión y ahora sí está. Y le escribió un libro para que nosotros podamos aprender de su historia. So, gracias por estar aquí conmigo, Leticia Ordaz. Hola, hola. Este libro es de ella. All right, here we go. This, belong, this book belongs to you. In the small California town of Galt, a five-year-old Latina watched the news. Her mommy said, Leti, turn the TV off. It's dinner time. Mommy, she said, why doesn't anyone look like me on TV? Mommy replied, oh, mija, don't worry. One day after you go to college, you can be on the news too. She and Papi inspired me to work hard to achieve my dreams, just like they had others. I wanted to be on TV, but I was a really shy little girl in class. When my sixth grade teacher, Miss Henrik, called on me to read aloud, I was nervous. I spoke so quietly that my classmates shouted, speak up, Leticia, we can't hear you. When I got home, I would lock myself in my room and I practiced reading in front of the mirror for two hours. You can do this, I thought. The next time the teacher calls on you, you're gonna read out loud and proud. That's what she would tell to herself. My parents encouraged me to do well in school. In Michoacan, Mexico, they left school after sixth grade to support their families. They immigrated to the United States to give me and my sister Lorena a better life. If only I had perfect teeth, she said, so I could smile with a confident smile. In high school, I begged my parents for braces. Papi picked grapes in the field and got a new job. My parents used the money that they saved for me because they knew I was getting good grades. See, sí, mija, we're going to try. I entered the golf pageant, Señorita Independencia de Mexico, competition to celebrate my Latina culture. I wasn't a good dancer and I didn't win, but I did make a lot of friends and I was awarded Miss Photogenic and a college, a college scholarship. Photogenic is when you take really nice pictures. After Lorena graduated from Galt High School, she went to work, but I wanted to attend college to show my cousins and my little brother Javier another path. So I enrolled in school and went to Sacramento State, a beautiful campus full of trees. I started studying theater, but then I switched quickly to communications. Students ran their own newscast on cable TV, so I wanted to learn and practice as much as possible. We wrote and shot our reports and I was the anchor. I applied for an internship at my telev dream television station, Channel 3 in Sacramento, and I got accepted. I was so excited that I, I baked brownies for everyone and even the crew. Veterans took me under their wings. Producer Steve McElsh advised, don't ever tell someone you want to be an anchor. You must work for that title. News anchor Lewis Hart mentored me. This is tough business and the starting pay is just peanuts. All right, on your first job, you're going to have to carry everything. You're going to be the one man band, carry your own camera and edit your own stories. Unafraid, I said, okay. So I accompanied reporters to snowstorms. In a satellite truck, we dropped off photo photographer Rob Stewart to shoot a video. When we found him later, he was practically frozen. Photograph photographers patiently helped me practice stand-ups on roadsides and in rainstorms. Sometimes I needed 20 takes to get it just right. I wanted to be a reporter and mailed my video resumes to 200 TV stations. Before my college graduation, my boyfriend Enrique and I drove through a blizzard for my interview in Elko, Nevada. The news at, um, director Jim Elliott said, if you can carry this camera and tripod, you're hired. The equipment weighed 65 pounds and I was only 95. 
Still, I answered, okay, I can do it. I began my dream career making minimum wage at $8 an hour. Just like my parents, I had to leave my hometown to achieve my dreams. Before Christmas, I became the first in my family to graduate from college. As I put on my cap and my gown, tears of joy rolled down my parents' faces. They sacrificed so much to give us this opportunity to do more with our lives. On New Year's Day, I left for Elko. My parents drove me in a moving truck with the bed and belongings, all my belongings over the snowy Sierras. At the small TV station, I met morning anchor Ellen Chang. Congratulations, said Ellen as she handed me the heavy equipment. Treat, hit this camera with care. It's your only one and we have to share it, you and me. After a quick lesson, I wanted to cover a story and make my deadline. I covered Cowboy Poetry Day. Western Wranglers shared stories and songs before an admiring audience. My first stand-up was blurry and a bust, but I told them I would get this right. For more than a year, I wrote my own stories. I shot videos. I prepared online aired news. I did my own makeup and I edited my reports. However, I was homesick for California. My family and my mommy's flower tortillas. Just then, I got a call from Bakersfield. KGET news anchor Jack Bowe proposed. All right, lady, I can offer you a job plus a cameraman to go with you on your stories. That was my lucky day and I accepted. My first story in live shot was covering a bear in my apartment complex. I remembered meteorologist Rob Maida's advice. If you don't have a script, keep it short, simple, and to the point, and describe what you're seeing. Next, I worked for the Fox, Radio, Fox station in Fresno. Once I wrapped up a snake around me on the county fair, covering honeybees at the almond orchard, my photographer and I were bitten by a scourge of mosquitoes. After many years and long shifts of paying my dues, my dream came true. I became a reporter at my local Sacramento station, Channel 3. I was so glad to be back in my hometown with my family and friends. My most memorable stories involved animals and helping people. At a dairy farm, Big Lucy the cow splashed me with some poop. Oh my gosh. Then at the surfing park, a giant wave come and wiped me out. Happily, Soon, I married Enrique. After my seven years in the broadcast building and built business, Enrique and I started a family. But now that I was pregnant, I was worried. Maybe some viewers won't want to see me on TV anymore. I was wrong. My newsroom boss, Lori Walden, said she surprised me by announcing, you will now be an anchor. I was revealed, I was relieved, and I was overjoyed that I could grow my family and career at the same time. Now we have two little boys, Maxton and Bronx, and they see their mommy on TV and it melts their heart every time they tell me, mommy, we're so proud of you for reading to our whole city. In 2018, for breaking news, I rushed to the Butte County fires to cover the fires. It was the most destructive fire in California's history. I hugged families who had lost their homes, but not their hope. Through it all, I love talking about my job with my students. Sometimes I have them practice speaking with the microphone. My biggest reward is helping the shy ones. I tell them, dreams can come true, no matter the color of your skin or where you come from. You will face hardships, but you have, have to believe in yourself. And that's your story. That's beautiful. So this is by Leticia Orda. She is coming to Greenfield. She is a friend of our district. She has this beautiful story to tell, and I can't wait for you to meet her. Thank you for joining me. I'm Sabrina Gavon with the Greenfield School District, sending a great big bear hug from our family to yours.